Um, <laughs> so this is a hilarious story, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, NIT viewers. Uh, my nigga, I'm, I'm here. Is your boy, Sir Corleone, Pi God, Jai Almighty, all that good jazz. Um, we actually talked for like 15 minutes and we weren't live. We did talk and we were, <laughs> we're not live. We're the exact opposite of that. Yeah, no. So mm-hmm. we kind of fucked it up, but we're going to run it back. Um, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's a great convo. I'm here with my boy K Rock, Young China, Young Lando. Hey. You know what I'm you already know what it is. Young K Rock, back from the dead, had COVID, but hey, they couldn't hold me down much longer, man. Back from the dead, the time to get a hit. Uh, mm. Back with another one. Yeah. I miss y'all. I hope y'all miss me too. Goddamn. <laughs> Facts. So we were going to do a bit of a little slut cast, slut cast, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But we don't have the full ensemble with us. But prepare for that extravaganza where we compare the all time great slutty rosters. Of uh, celebrity history, you know what I'm saying? Nips, <laughs> <laughs> but um, with my nigga Lando here, uh, you know, with Lando, I feel like I always learn something. Um, when talking to him, get a fresh perspective, you know, um, yeah. you know, he's a modern day philosopher, man. What, what can we say, young Aristotle, you know what I'm saying. So, Lando, oh, I got a bit of a deep thought question that I want you to get into, man. All right, yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, Can money buy happiness? Are people only happy with money? Okay. I really think that with that question, you could really come up with an easy answer and say yes, but just given my perspective on it and my experience with it, I think it really depends on someone's placement in life Mm -hmm. because I do think there are times in which money is a necessity for your happiness. I do think people come to a time where not having money and not having those resources that come with money can ruin the quality of their life and thus bring down their overall level of happiness. You know, we all saw the Maslow hierarchy of needs. You know, eventually, the more you get up in the the basic level of necessities is like your first need for a hierarchy. You need that shit. And if you don't got money, then, of course, things will go bad. But I'm going to hit you guys with a fresh perspective because there's a point in time where I can say that when I was poor, I actually was happier. <clears throat> it all started with my childhood. For any of y'all don't know, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, over east. That's where I started for me. I was over there on the east side living with my grandma and my mom with my three sisters. And I'll let you know, man, it was hard out there. It was really hard. We, you know, Detroit's a different beast. We don't, we don't get to do what the rest of people can do out here, man. It's like that level of poverty, shit. So... Growing up in Detroit, I was the happiest little poor kid you have ever met (laughs) because, frankly, I had things. My mom always made sure that I had the freshest clothes. She always made sure that I was well fed. I don't know how the fuck she did, but she did. And also my grandparents, too. They were very active in my life. I had a very close-knit family, many cousins, many aunts, many uncles who all love my little ass. So I was always, I always felt the love for my family. I was always very socially active as a kid. Every weekend we was at our aunt's house, we was at our uncle house, or my dad might have took me by to see my other side of the family and I would hang out with them. I was hanging out with all these different people as a kid, doing all these different activities. We had a lot going on when we were poor. But you know, poverty, Hey, I was cool being poor, but my parents, they had bigger plans, man. My dad, he had a situation where he could have moved to Augusta, Georgia, and actually make a good living for himself. He went out, he went out there alone at first. Then he said, hey, I really want to bring the family together. I want us all to be a family. I want y'all to come with us. And through going to Augusta, Georgia... I would just say that my level of happiness 
flummoxed it as a kid. I went from have, being able to hang out with cousins, being able to do things all the time, to being in a place where I didn't know nobody. I was just in this tiny house with, cramped up with my little sisters. I mean, cramped up with all my sisters and everything. And overall, everyone was just not adjusting to at well. And frankly, through my time living in Augusta, I don't think I ever adjusted to that place well because it was never home for me. So I'll just say that even though with moving to Augusta, Georgia, we're able to make a better living for ourselves as a family, we're able to do things that we never were able to do in Detroit, Michigan. And I was on a good path in Augusta to where I didn't have to worry about the woes of growing up in an overtly impoverished community. I can say that I was not as happy in Augusta, Georgia as I was as a kid in Detroit, Michigan. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now, now you said you focus mainly as on you as a kid, and you know I feel yeah. like a lot of kids just don't like no shit. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like even even with like the improvement of lifestyle, like I guess or rather access to like new resources, and you know that didn't affect your perspective at all, and like being a music child. Yeah. I think it did pers- uh, it did actually influence my perspective because <clears throat> as a child yeah I didn't know any better. I remember listening to Usher's yeah and I just thought Usher was from Detroit. I thought everyone was from Detroit. I thought <laughs> Detroit was the world. I didn't know shit about different cities. I didn't know things about small towns. I didn't know about big towns. I didn't know about north, south, east, or west. All I knew was what I was seeing, Detroit. So at that point, you could have painted any picture in my head of anything else, and I could have gravitated towards that and actually come up with some ideas. But my dad, before he moved us out to Augusta, Georgia, he was telling me all these nice things about Augusta. He was saying that there's a park near our house. He was saying that there's probably a better school system. Hence, hence, there isn't, unless you like. <laughs> and then he even, you know... He just bigged up Augusta, like, it's our time for prosperity. It's our time to really come up. So at that point, I haven't seen my father in, like, three months. He went off to Augusta without us at first, so I was just happy to see my dad and for us to, like, make it work. What kid don't want to be with his dad right. and have his whole family together? So I was very happy to move to Augusta because I didn't know what it was. Like, I really do think that, like, as a kid, you don't think about that. Like, I've seen kids wear fresh-ass clothes, and then they eat some Cheetos, and then they just, like, put all the Cheeto dust on the nice-ass polo shirts and stuff because kids don't care about that shit. <laughs> they just, they don't care about the material things, but I will say that Cheetos when age crazy. comes... Excuse me? That's it, the Cheeto dust is crazy. <laughs> no, I've seen it. I was like, nigga, that shirt costs you $60, and you have these Levi's on, you put Cheeto dust on and the pudding all up on your shit, boy can't believe it but (laughs) with age comes the time where you need those material things all right because guess what i pay my dues okay okay and there's a time where because i pay my dues i felt entitled as i've earned the opportunity to have some sort of level of monetary success monetary gain and there was a time in my life where things became different. As I said, perspective and life goals, they can influence your level of happiness and when you might need certain things to be happy. Yeah. I was a kid, I mean, when I was an adult, I just graduated college and hey, I was ready for the big world that I was told that I'll be able to conquer with my little degree. Yeah. I was ready to have the car. I was ready to go out. I was ready to be a young adult. I was ready to be social. But pandemic hit. And with the pandemic hit, came a time where the economy was shot. It became a time where companies, they weren't trying to hide too many people. They were actually rescinding offers. And it came at a time where the world was just looking pretty bleak. And in that time, I'm sure... I know a lot of y'all came up. I already know it. I'm from yeah, Detroit, I know how the game goes. Scandemic. Y'all niggas got them loans. <laughs> it's 
spent got a bag, spent the bag, got another bag. I saw y'all, y'all was in the club, spreading all them COVID germs to every single body, wearing them poo shicey masks. I saw y'all niggas. Y'all did it big, but guess who didn't do it big? Me. Because I wanted to do things right. I wanted to get a job. I wanted to build a professional network, build experience for myself. I didn't want quick money. I wanted sustainability. So that shit's over at that time. Kidding. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But shit, at that time, that's all a nigga wanted. So mm. I was applying for jobs. I was stuck at my mama crib. I had nowhere to go, really, typically, throughout the day. And overall, like, I had to pause my fucking life. And at that point in time, a bag could have helped me a lot. A bag right. is what I needed. I needed that bag. I needed the opportunity to leave my parents' crib. I needed the opportunity to buy myself some damn clothes. I needed that opportunity to be able to say, hey, if I want to go out to the coffee shop, buy myself like a mocha latte, a little sandwich too, maybe a croissant, and then afterwards go to the movies, I can do that without having to be stressed the fuck out. Right. So, yeah, eventually I grinded and made it happen. I ended up getting a nice paying job. And with that came money. It came benefits. Many benefits that I'm using to this day. And yeah, overall, my quality of life increased significantly. It became great. I was able to buy clothes. I traveled to many different places since then. It's only been a year, but I've done my fair share of traveling. I did my fair share of living. I was able to go out and even get my teeth fixed. For y'all who don't know, I had the crooked smile. Shout out to my man, Jermaine. And get this, with that crooked smile, I was ready to just let it let it rock. I never thought that I would be able to afford being able to fix my teeth, you know? Nigga didn't have braces growing up, so I just thought, like, hey, if my people didn't do it for me, then when am I going to be able to do it for me, you know? I'm right. probably going to have to pay for an apartment, a car. All my money going to be shot, but hey... Life is strange, right? I was able to <laughs> fix my teeth. <laughs> and every single day, every time I wake up in the morning, my ritual starts with doing the rich nigga grin. Got a little rich nigga. Payroll Giovanni. But, uh, okay, well, I have a question, right? Sure. What, I guess, clicked to where you were aware that you needed those things, those resources, right? To the point to where whenever you weren't, you didn't have them or you didn't have access to them, you know, Um, because you said you started off without it. So I could just imagine that it was just kind of like, okay, well, if you never had it, if you never saw it, do you think that you still would have been happy? If I never saw it? Yeah. Or do you think that you ever would have felt that unhappiness that you felt whenever you lost it? Uh, I'm just, I, I quite frankly, I'm not entirely sure because if I never saw it, then I might not know what it was. But the thing about it is I would have seen it on somebody else eventually. And with that what? comes my idea of a class system. Mm-hmm. I was part of a higher class of individuals than all of my peers because I came in, I was from a family where you know, the, the the nuclear family, I got to live there. I got to live with a parent who made stable income. So all the poor people around me, they looked at me like I was I was something, you know? Right. So I will say that if I didn't have it, I would have known that the next person had it, and I probably would have tried to get it because that's what people do. That's what people do from Detroit, man. You think that because our city bankrupt that we don't got shit, but no, nah, no. I'm telling you, Benzes, chains, watches, you got it all because... Right. Being broke, that's the biggest sin where I'm from. So eventually you need it. And I feel as though it would come to a time because you know this you you know how it was. In school, as soon as niggas got to the seventh, eighth grade, niggas started getting fresh, you know. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. If you wasn't fresh, man, fresh. it was a problem. So when do you think got fresh? Mm-hmm. So do you think that it's a, a societal issue where or, or rather, our environment kind of won't allow people to be happy in poverty. I Do you think, think that our society kind of, you know, 
justifies having to work for, like, the, for it, it kind of forces you to want money. Yes, I think our society does force us to want money because, like I said, I live in literally the poorest city in America. And in that poor city in America, literally everyone's main goal and what everyone thinks about all the time is making some money because mm-hmm. we live in a system, we live in a society where poverty makes you look down upon. And believe it or not, poor people who got a little bit of bread, they gonna treat poor a poor person who got less than them like shit. They gonna treat them worse than a middle class person would treat a poor person. Like, it came to a time where poverty has its own case system. So, really? yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. It could be a $10,000 difference, but that was enough for me to shit on your broke ass. That's, that's <laughs> how it is in Detroit, man. That's how it is. Not even just Detroit, but the hood in general. So, yeah, I think eventually everyone understands what America is. We all got TVs. And TV is pretty much what taught me the game of life in general, which maybe it wasn't the best way to learn. But we all saw the, that nice family with the nice cars and then the big house and shit. And we all thought, damn, I don't got that. Eventually, we all had to reflect on the fact that maybe our situation was less than idea because why do all these little pretty white people on TV got it and we all don't, Lord. you know? So, yeah, I think we're primed for this. We're primed to chase the bag. We're primed to chase the dollar. And we can't be happy without it. They don't want us to be happy without it. That's why our social safety nets are bullshit. That's why we are taught to look down on poor people. That's why why we're taught to basically look at someone who's not grinding and not ambitious as they're in our way. Not that they're doing their thing. Not that they're off to the side. Not that they have their own life. But they're in our way from getting good things. Mm. So and look at the nigga next to us, like they're in our way too. Mm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, so how do I want to frame this? So, do you think that there's a dollar amount to where you can be happy? Because I do That's think that grind culture <laughs> does have its kind of toxicity per se you know Mm -hmm. what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like um for me i always noticed i always known that i was like if there was enough money to make sure that my like immediate family wouldn't have to like work or want for nothing and i know the Mm -hmm. things that i want out of life if there was a dollar amount like if somebody told me that let's just call it 200 million right yeah Somebody gave me two hundred million dollars. I'm pretty sure I can make less a lot, but <laughs> honestly, mm-hmm. probably like eighty million dollars, right? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure that I can get everything that I personally want out of life off of that, right? Yeah, and keep it sustaining. But yeah, is there a specific number for you, or are you kind of like Warren Buffett, Elon Musk? You know what I'm saying? Paper Chase. I feel you yeah that, that's a really good question because I really do think that as of now at this point in my life like I said it's always life goals right now my goal is to be able to make a sustainable living for myself my long-term goal is to be able to just be straight to be to a point where whatever I want to do I can just go ahead and do that and I have to worry about what's going to come next financially. So right now, my biggest goal and the biggest vision I see for myself is to be able to have enough money to be comfortable to a point where like, say, I could wear a Rolex and look at it like it's not really, you know, it's not shit. I could have my bins look at it like it's not shit. But also, I could travel and look at it like it's not shit. So I guess Maybe being, back in the day, we wouldn't call this upper middle class. We call this rich, but because of the way inflation works and shit, I guess being 2020s level of upper middle class is, I guess, what I would like. You know, just some mills, some good money in the bank account, 
and the ability to say like, hey, I kind of feel like going to Paris for like a weekend. Maybe I could set that up in a month, you know, yeah. be able to travel, be able to move, be able to be flexible. That's why I think flexibility ultimately is important. And I think with flexibility, it just comes money. Yeah. That's well, the no, argument that you kind of hear a lot for like why people, you know, go get money. And they say that, you know, um, I think what was it, Samuel Jackson says that money does buy happiness, right? It's like anybody that says you doesn't has either always had money or would never have money. Yeah. I, I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, it is interesting because, I mean, he does have a point. It kind of reminds me of when Kanye said, money's not everything, not having it is. Like, there's a certain level, I think, where people can be content or where people can be, you know, straight with the amount of money they make. But I do think that people get used to things, you know what I'm saying? Right. Eventually, someone who's, you know, in their 20s, making 60k they're gonna be like you know 60k cool but i got myself a girlfriend i think i need to bump that shit up to 70. then when they get that 70 four or five years from now when they have a kid they thinking like this kid gonna have to go through private school i'm gonna want a college phone for them so fuck that i want 130k mm -hmm. i want to make 130k that's my end game and then when they make 130k then comes well, if you able to make 130k, that means that you can move up in the manager you position, 200, possibly the suite. 300. Yeah. Eventually, it just starts raining. So, 300, 400k, and then eventually they like, you know what? I want to take what I've learned from my professional career, go out, and actually start my own services. So maybe I can even start touching mills. Right. And they start touching mills. I really do think that people eventually. They always want more. Always want more. I don't think that I'll ever be in a position where I'm 100% okay with the money I have or won't want more. Well, actually, I mean, I'm okay with the money I'm making right now, but I do want more, of course. It's so, it's, you feel it's human nature? It's human nature. It's human nature. But I do think that some things do eventually trump money because there are certain things that I want right now that I don't think money could necessarily buy. I frankly don't think money could buy. And my goals for right now, even though I do want more money, I would just say like our, my main goal isn't even to make more money. Like, you know, a lot of people, their goal with getting a job is to move up in the corporate ladder, make more money or right. start investments and shit. Right. My goal is to become a modern day leader slash mind for the community. My goal is to gain a certain level of artistic expertise so I can be able to touch those who have experienced things like me or who would like to learn more about the type of experiences that we have as African Americans. That's my goal. Cool. I don't think making a super big investment is going to be able to get uh, help me get that goal. I think continuously learning, experiencing, and sharpening my mind will help me get that goal. So, well, yeah, as of now, I am. I, I money is like second rate to me right now. It's all about building something. That's what I want to do. If it takes more money to do that, then I'll have to go get more money. But I don't want it just to have it. You know. Right. Yeah. So, are you building just to, I guess, find this, are you building for achievement, are you building for fulfillment, or would you say that you're building for some kind of sense of duty? It's all three, bro. All three, brother. That's what I want. I want it all, you know. I, the sense of duty is how it started. I saw mm -hmm. where I was at, you know. Like I said, poor kid. That's what I was growing up. Well, as, as, a, as a young child, at least. And even though I got to escape poverty, the person next to me did not. I went to the poorest schools that Augusta, Georgia had to offer. I lived in the poorest communities that they had to offer. I had friends who didn't know when their next meal was going to come. And I've seen people lose their minds in this process. I've seen kids who one bad day led them to a life of crime. 
And I know what some certain people might say. It could be like, oh, you never know who their brother, cousin, OGs might have been that could have led them. No, I'm talking about I saw that one bad day that led them to go off and get on the deep end. And next thing I know, two, three years later, they in the cell and they face in 20, 30 years. I seen yeah. it. Yeah. So that's where the duty started, knowing that all my boys, all my guys, hell, all my homegirls are like, you know, they, there's, they are in need of some sort of assistance, guidance, some sort of help. And then there comes a sense of, I guess, fulfillment because when I say I want to be a mind, that means like to be a mind, you, you, there are certain ways to, I guess, share knowledge. You can share it through speaking, you can share it through a work of art, or you can share it through writing. Right. Writing is a big passion of mine because I just like doing it. I like doing it. I like playing with nuances. I like characters. I like stories. I love stories. Stories, I create stories for myself right now. Like, you know my alter egos now. <laughs> <laughs> I create, stories are everything to me. I love them. So I would love to write stories. Like, so I just, I guess it's just like maybe my way of combining it because we've seen it happen before. We've seen what Zora Neale Hurston has done. We still honor her to this day because of her commitment to like really showing that even though African Americans were fighting a lot for desegregation, there's a certain level of segregation in her community that actually worked. And also we've seen it with Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison wrote some works that to this day, we just can't help but think fondly of and that we can't help but relate to. She wrote that shit in the, she wrote works in the 70s about things that happened in the 20s, but it just touches our hearts. So I just want to really do that. I want people from 2080 to look at my work and be like, damn, I'm, hopefully they won't be able to relate to it because hopefully we as black people, we make something happen for ourselves. Not even just black people, but we as Americans, because I mean, I'm starting to see that there, there are a lot of things that's not even just hurting African Americans, but the average day person. So yeah, yeah, yeah I just want <clears throat> like like yeah, that's that's pretty much my goal. Like with the fulfillment that comes with being able to relate to people and have people relate to me in some sort of way through my work, and then with achievement comes with leaving behind that legacy where that work gets expanded upon, that work gets talked about. That work helps build another mind who can say like, hey, if K-Rock did this, then I could take a step further and do something great that could really make a big difference for us right now. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I just, that, that's pretty much my goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I dig it, I dig it. Appreciate now, it. just to wrap up here, we kind of, we went through, I guess, different, you know, I guess, aspects of things that you chase. Uh, talk about, like, the overall, I guess, pursuit of happiness, no pun intended. <laughs> what would you say is, um, you know, what, what would you tell somebody that's like, we're, we're all in our 20s, but any, I guess, advice you can give for what are things that they should seek out, you know what I'm saying? Should it be should it be seeking out money at this time so you can have it for later on for freedom or you know should they seek out uh, fulfillment should they seek out some kind of sense of duty you know what what just give the people you know in your thoughts would it be I guess a good sense of direction because I know in your early twenties you know a lot of people shit they didn't get a chance to go to college even if they did go to college they don't know what the fuck they want to do with their degree um exactly insert right. myself <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah so <laughs> yeah like what what would you kind of tell people to strive for right now right now i would tell people to go and write a list of things that make them happy and go for that because the thing about us as individuals is that we have our own certain level of i guess we, we have our own things that we put value into and only you can create, put value into something like someone can look down at a rock on the ground and tell me like, hey, yo, this rock is, is, is valuable because like, like a stone told me that this tree in front of me is valuable because 
uh, you know, it sustains our air, you know, it, it, it's a part of the earth, then yeah. I can look at it and be like, nigga, I don't care about the earth. Fuck that tree. You know? <laughs> right. So, like, I do think that, like, in general, it depends on your values. Like, if you value money, if you want to have that rich nigga grin that I was talking about earlier, if you want to have the tailored suit, if you want to be able to walk into that restaurant and say, you know, like, hey, I want to set your finest table, bring me your finest wine. If you want to be able to really, sh- like, show that you are a high-class, high-stats individual, then I'll say go for money. If you're someone who feels like there's something missing in terms of your place in life, in terms of what am I giving to society right now, basically, I'm in this world, right? And, like, if you're alive right now, then I consider being alive to be a beautiful thing. I consider being alive to be a very positive thing. So, as people, you know... If you're alive, then you have to look at it, at least from my perspective, as like I want to give back to this world that I'm that I can live in. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm allowed to live in this world. There's some level of, you know, responsibility I have to making sure that this place is good and making sure that I could leave a good touch on it. So if you are feeling as though you're not giving back enough and you would like to do that and you actually value leaving behind the legacy of giving back, then I think Right now, it could be a good time to find a cause, donate into it, whether or not you want to spend your money or whether or not you want to spend your time, do that. And also, if like you say, I'm on a mission right now to achieve something, anything, if you want to achieve, because I know some people who want to achieve shit just for the sake of achieving it. I know some people who don't even really have goals. They just want to achieve shit. You know, right. like I say, it's values. If you value achievement a lot, then I say go out. Maybe grind and achieve something, you know? I think overall, just you have to write down what your values are and try to see what can I do right now to make it happen. Well, and all that shit can intertwine. Like, very true. Yeah, like you might need money to make donations, so you might want more of it. You might want to achieve by helping actually, you know, bring that, that charity to a bigger light and hell, even run a charity. You yeah. know? Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, wise words from Lando. Just giving his thoughts and dissecting, you know, happiness, what is life, all that good jazz. You never know what you're going to get on the NIT podcast, man. I know y'all enjoy watching me get my ass whooped and jump for it. But (laughs) hey, tomorrow, well, next time, guess guess we're doing Smutcast. Smutcast. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. A uh, little all over the place, but just wanted to give y'all some some positivity, some deep thought, some introspective. You know, the mission of our podcast is always think for yourself, but we got some pretty cool people a part of this little thing, man. So mm-hmm. just want you to hear their thoughts as well. It's your boy, I Sir Cole Young. You know what I'm saying? Young host. My name is K-Rock. Young K-Rock. Uh, wish we had a you know, better outro, but, you know, the style ain't free, so subscribe to our OnlyFans. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, watch us every Saturday on Twitch, Sir Corleone. You can catch these episodes live, or we upload to YouTube at NIT Pod TV. NIT Pod TV, just all one long phrase on YouTube, all caps. NIT Pod TV. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, we out. We out. Peace. Peace.